friends, I would do these purse parties at like four, I couldn't even drive. Purse parties of knockoff designer no handbags. No way. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I mean, we do get weird people like... that come in thinking we're like a sex shop or like a weed store. He was just like, you are gonna waste your life if you are sitting at a desk every day. Four hours later, I am just like oh, sobbing no, no, about, no, and no. then I'm like, I guess I'm starting a store. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the show. This is, I'm so extreme when I throw my fingers like this. It's like, yeah, it's like Brad Pitt from 12 Monkeys. This is a show about f***ing up, uh, making mistakes, uh, recovering from those mistakes. We talk to entrepreneurs, we talk to artists, we talk to people with big ideas that run into some roadblocks and find out that there are things that they didn't know how to do. Today, we have Kayla from Pipe and Row. It is a clothing store, but fancier than that, like a clothier, clothier, clothier store in Fremont, I believe that's where it's at. And I'm excited to meet her and to make sure that I got that right when I said Fremont, let's get going. Everybody, welcome to the show. I am here with Kayla. You say hi, oh look, oh. you can look at this one okay. too. And they're gonna, I mean, they're gonna at the keep same it. time that you're doing that? No. Oh, okay. You can do whatever you want while oh, I'm okay. doing it. Okay. Probably what we just did will end up in the show. Okay, if yeah. that gives you any indication of okay, what cool, it will feel. Cool, no, cool. I'm here with Kayla from Pipe and Row. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having me. Yeah, tell, tell us more about what you do, about your business, about yeah, your store. Yeah, I have a women's clothing store in Fremont. We have online as well. It's wearable, unique clothing and accessories. Yeah. Uh, and a, attainable price point. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, okay, and okay. we really strive to have sustainable brands, independent designers, yeah. um, and it's just really things that you want to wear every single day. They're go-to pieces that okay. are like, make your outfit, but also you are just, it's so easy to put them on. Yeah, so our yeah. tagline is not your average staple. You can tell that you're um, better dressed and always better dressed than I will ever be. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. But you're dressed great. I'm dressed great. Yeah. Yeah. Look. Yeah. I put on a T-shirt. Yeah. Um, I wonder how you got into doing this type of stuff. Like how you yeah. got into because it, it sounds really unique. Well, my parents had craft stores growing up, oh, so that's awesome. similar Wait, to like Michaels. Really? Yeah. So you would so, go and buy like craft supplies. Then. Yes. Yeah. They went through everything. We did the floral thing, scrapbooking, every phase. Yeah. There. There it was, and I would um, I would work in the store my whole life, like from little little. You whether worked I was, in a craft store. Yeah, from like when you're like a pricing candy or different things. Like how how young? Like, like pricing candy. I mean, like five six years old. Yeah, and so I think without even my parents really walking me through anything, I just took that all in of buying and selling and yeah. you know margins to a certain you know without a loose like in general. Yeah, and yeah. I would. My dad would take me to like the candy shows. What do you remember from the candy show? Oh my God, so many samples. What? <laughs> so many samples. You gotta try all of these candies. Yeah, I was just, oh, and I was a hoarder. It. Like I would come home and I would just have bags of it and it'd be under my bed for like This is years. better than Halloween. Yeah. So he would take you and you would see that type of stuff. And, and yeah. so that was built in. That makes sense yeah. from seeing your parents do that. So I think my dad was just always on the lookout for buying and selling. He He's a super like, motorcycle hunting guy and that people would think it's so funny that he would <laughs> sell the craft store yeah and he's like I well i like funny. buying and selling stuff so whether yeah. that was he he was buying and selling houses or whatever it was so yeah yeah i think that was just kind of ingrained yeah. in our household and yeah. i found out about like knock off handbags and i would tell my dad in ninth grade so my dad knew that i knew what was like popular and what everyone wanted. He would go down to LA and I would tell him, okay, look for this, I'd give him pictures, look for this, ask for this guy, and he'd be down there negotiating with the guy and I'd be telling him what to get. And then I would, to my mom's friends, I would do these purse parties at like four, I couldn't even drive, purse parties. And I would set up in someone's <laughs> house. Calling. Yes, you exactly. Do, you yes. did a purse party. Of, of knockoff designer no handbags. No way. Yeah. Oh yeah. And did they, wait, did they know they were not Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not a you're con artist. Coming, like, <laughs> they would go in with them and tell their nail lady, and then I'd show up to the nail salon, and they'd literally be going through my trunk and just, like, 
buying all this <laughs> stuff. It was crazy. So but that so that starts though, it's just still like a fashion thing. Like yeah. with the purses it seems yep. to be kind of thematically. I think we might have a drink. Ooh. Are we ready? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Your uh, drink tonight yeah, no, is called the uh, <laughs> the eighth no, fold. This is so good. Yeah. See? Ooh, oh, that's gorgeous. Is that amazing? Yes. There's eight tenets to Buddhism about living right. The eighth of them is uh, specifically about having rightful unions, rightful connections, um, being in tune and linking up with your community and your village and building the village. So this is called the Eighth Fold. You have rum from Michoacan from um, just outside of Oaxaca. You have a little bit of maraschino, again, coming from a small village just on the other side of the world. And then the maraschino is combined with hyssop, which is a herb that's been re used religiously for purification rituals. A little bit of blue violet, cedar tincture, lime bitters. It's not that complex, just not that No, complex. not at all. I could totally make this at home. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, you're really good. I could. So easy to do. <laughs> Will I? I <laughs> <laughs> going to say it, too. We'll, we'll find Actually, out after you taste it. it. <laughs> all right. All right. Which, you, uh, which one you want? You'll take that yeah. one. I'll take this one. How do you, uh, you have a preferred way of salute. cheers? Salute. Okay. So, salute. salute. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. That hits me before it goes in. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That was really good. Now, eventually, you, you so you graduate on from handbags to clothes. But what yeah. happened? What happens in the middle? Yeah. Right? So then I started working for Nordstrom when I was sixteen. Oh wow! And I think that's where I, that's where I, was able really to see what people are buying at what price, at why they were buying it. Um, the interesting part to me is how people integrate that into their life. Yeah. And also, how do you make money off of it? Yeah. And sell it to people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was there in, in and out of college and all that it was a great job yeah. to have for that. And then I moved to New York. Like, you know, I'm like 22. I'm like, this seems like the coolest thing. Have, now, have you, had you been to New York before? Once. Once? Just yes. like on a family trip type of um, thing? My mom or? took me for my 18th birthday. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yep. I just applied what? for a bunch of jobs. Like? A million internships. Yeah. Did a million different things. You did? Yeah. And that really helped me to figure out what I want to do. I think I figured out a lot of what I didn't want to do. Yeah. I thought I wanted to be in design. So first you thought you wanted to be in design. Yes. And then, and then I kind that, of, I like did what internships you out of that? at like Kenneth Cole and a few other places. And I just realized that I'm good at interacting with a customer and figuring out yeah. what they want and kind of all of that and being away from the customer. That's I interesting. I felt like, like it was somebody else telling me what the customer wanted. Yeah. And I just didn't connect with that. Seems like you like the the connection bit yeah. more on having yeah. like that, that. And I think I dialogue. like I like pushing the boundaries with people, yeah. but within to a certain degree within their Wait, comfort zone. Tell me zone. about what that means. Like you so say you like, like to push so like if my like, mom comes in right, and so you're like so someone's like I only want to wear this is a great like I only want to wear skinny jeans. I'm like, "Okay. I hear you." Yeah. I'll give you some skinny <laughs> jeans, but try. why don't you try this jean that's basically skinny, but just straight at the bottom. Yeah. Like it's more modern, more, you know, different than what you have. If they like it, great. But if they're like, I love this, but I'm never going to wear it. I'm like, well, then don't buy it. Because mm -hmm. I want you to be, all the items you get from here are like. You, I want you to wear them. Yes. And yeah, you keep then, coming back because there's those back. stores yeah. you buy stuff from and you're like, I love going in there and I buy stuff and I never wear anything. Yeah. And who wants to keep shopping there. Yeah. I never wanted to have a store. Ever? Well, people would always say, oh, are you going to have your own store? Are you going to have your own line? And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, oh. I don't want to work for myself. I don't want to do that. No. Well, what, um, were you, what were you doing at the time that people would say, like, hey, why don't you go well, do your own store? Well, just being in fashion. Like, yeah. Like, they just think that's the dream, right? Which... I get, but I just knew how hard it was going to be. Yeah. I knew how much work was going to go into it and all of that. And I was just like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I saw my parents go through it in the highs and lows. And I'm like, I want something stable. Yeah. I was working for my brother's like real estate development company. Yeah. I had just come off working for um, another designer. And it was amazing, but obviously like, wasn't going to have the money to like, have me work there very long to sustain them. Right, right. 
I was like, okay, this isn't working. It's time to move on. So my brother was like, okay, you can come in, help us out whenever you want. Knew that this was not my thing, you right, know? Right, right. But I actually started working there and I actually really started to like it. I was like, this is so cool. I'm learning about accounting, uh, yeah. learning about all these basic business things in action that I would have never put myself in this situation. Like people who worked there were so great yeah. and normal and nice and no one, <laughs> people weren't having like constant meltdowns <laughs> like I was used to. I was like, wow, <laughs> this is so nice. <laughs> so I had just told my brother, I was like, can I work here full time? And he's yeah. like, okay that's fine, but you need to give me two full years. I don't want any of this like, oh, I found this other thing. That's oh, your cool. brother made you commit. Like, yeah. that's it. He was like, because he knew it wasn't what I really wanted to do. Yeah. So he's like, fine, I'll, you can do it, but you need to be here and commit to this. And I was like, okay, I'm totally in. I'm totally in. And he's like, nope, give me the weekend to think about it. And then yeah. you can tell me on Monday. Yeah. And I met up with an old high school friend that bought this cafe and he was like, he told me you want to go drink. So I'm like, sure, whatever. I'll meet up with you. No idea what he was going to ask me or yeah. anything. So I told him this and he was just like, you cannot do this. You are going to waste your life if you are sitting at a desk every day. And I was like, no, 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 no. And four hours later, I am just like oh, sobbing no, no, about, no, and no. then I'm like, I guess I'm starting a store. <laughs> your business. Um, now, you sell uh, sort of designer unique clothing, mm -hmm. and um, and you were very clear on it not being a, a like come here get the one outfit to wear to the Grammys and then that's the right. one that exists. Yeah, that was a learning curve for sure. Um, I thought there would be more. I was carrying more things that you would wear to events like weddings or different things, oh. and because people were buying that. They didn't want to buy that from me. Why wouldn't they want to buy this? Because you're like untrusted. Um, no, or they um, I just think see they like, were. You know, you know, when you're on a mission to find certain dress for something, yeah. you're looking online. You're going to, I don't know where exactly. So if you're you going, have a mission was, on like what you want it to be, right? Then you're just going to go find it, like online or something like right. that. Right, and we are definitely a destination. We have a couple uh, shops around us and yeah. things, but. Um, like when people get things at your place now, even though it's not a, a place for weddings. Yes, they definitely can find things for a, a wedding, but yeah. we cater <laughs> to things that are an everyday yeah, yeah, wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really try and think about who, when I look at each item, yeah. who is this customer wearing it? Not like, do I have a friend where, that would wear this? Yeah, where yeah. are they going? What are they doing? Yeah. Um, I love the example of the sexy lawyer yeah. because uh, I there's, be tons a sexy of, lawyer. there's tons of what? <laughs> like where they're like yeah. super fashionable pencil skirt with like a super cool oh, wow. I want trench every, coat yeah. and all of this. So there's lots of brands that make that and it's yeah. like you look at it and you're like, oh my God, that is amazing. Oh yeah, someone will totally wear that for work or something. And you really think about it and it's like, I'm in the business of fashion and I'm not even wearing this every day. Then why or I'm am not I wearing that. It? So what, yeah, why yeah. are we selling it? It's named after my niece and nephew, twin niece and nephew. Oh, Piper twins? And, yeah, Piper and Rowan. Do you have like pipes? And no. No. <laughs> I thought about it. I did think about it. I'm like, oh, let's go. Like, we're by the canal here, yeah. so we could have some oars. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, well, I guess what type of pipes? I, I was yeah. picturing more like lead pipes. I mean, we do get weird people like, that come in thinking we're like a sex shop or like a weed store. I don't know what they're thinking, but I'm like, all right, yeah, okay, be on your way. <laughs> like, I don't want to know more information. <laughs> Pi Pi come on, honey, we're going to Pipe and Row. All right, so you you start this and it's uh, all this stuff. It's smooth sailing. Everything's oh, yeah. good uh -huh. for now. Uh -huh. I know. Yeah. This is um, me. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Give us the f up. Um, so when I opened the store, first of all, I didn't know what I was doing <laughs> at all. Like at all? Uh, like, no. It was an interesting time. It was right when fast fashion, so like Zara, H&M, all of that were at their height. Oh, like yeah, all yeah, these yeah, like yeah, yeah. cheap turn around quick, super cheap, and then slow fashion and sustainable, sustainability, all of that was becoming cool too, yeah. which is definitely something I've always wanted yeah. to go into, but I just didn't know 
how to do that. And I knew people were coming in asking for it, right? And yeah. I knew to, ha we had a lot of brands that were made in the USA, everything. So it was like, people want this, people want this. And I get it in and they're like, where, I only want to buy stuff that's made in the USA or blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, great. We have this, this, and this. And they'd look at the price tag, which we try and have, I call it attainable pricing. It's like yeah. under, we try for under $200. A yeah, lot of yeah, things yeah. are like around 100 Yeah. Um, and they'd be like, why is this so expensive? And why is this one so cheap? And yeah. I'm like, well, that one's made in China. Yeah. And this one is made in the USA. Yeah, and then they'd walk out with the one made in China. When they walked in telling me they, they only, want only wanted made. that. A lot of things are going to be made other places. Well, which at, can at be my really price great. Point. Right. right. And I, I, we try our best to figure out where they're being made and what the situation is and all of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, at the time, people now people will spend a little more for that, or yeah. certain people only would. But at the time, so I was getting in all this inventory, all this stuff, and I was like, "What do you? Why is everyone asking for this?" And I finally just had to come down to like, it makes them feel better to ask about it, and yeah. then they oh. still only want to pay whatever the, the lowest right. possible thing. But you had to it, figure you had to figure that out. Like, yeah, like and I had go in so assuming, much inventory. Assuming it was, one thing and then like, whoa, yeah. wait a second. I had more inventory at opening like, in one year than I do even to this day. I wanted to be something for everyone. Yeah. I was like, well, we, like you're like the Well, I wanted like, to have like all sizes of, and inclusive oh. and blah, 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 which I would love to have, but I just came to, it's, you can't, yeah. you know, or I can't at the scale I'm at yeah. and the customer I have yeah. and all of that. And it was, I mean, it took me two to three years yeah. to get out of that, even to be not paying for that yeah. inventory. My dad also coming from a, you know, he sold, he made he sold so like, much money like, on right. a one dollar item. So he kept telling me, you can't sell from an empty basket. You can't sell from an empty basket. Oh. So I was like, you're right, we need to have a lot of inventory to be able to sell, but like having more of something doesn't make it <laughs> yeah, sell he more. Took you, he took you to the candy. Yeah. Like, like, like yeah. okay. It sounds like if I came in, it would be, I would end up having a conversation with somebody. Yeah, we try like, and make it like a really inclusive. It's not like I come inclusive. in, I buy something, I bolt, right? Yes, I want to have an inclusive space where everyone, I like to think that we're really cool yeah. and all of that, but also where you're not intimidated. Yeah. And also where you're not just finding stuff that you'll find yeah. at Nordstrom or anywhere else. Yeah. Um, so I try and really curate something that's special yeah. for people that's and cool. makes yeah. people feel really good. I have another right. f up. Yeah, is, not wait, is this f up you won't talk about until you've had drinks? Is that what, are we to that point? I don't know. Yes, I'm not, all right, I'm pretty, keep going, I'm, I'm so excited. Open. Yeah, you are um, pretty open. After the first year and I was like, okay, enough people know, I know I'm not gonna be booming in business, but my dream customer was walking in the door, even going and trying on stuff and still yeah. not buying anything. And I was just like, what is the deal? I feel like I know what people want. I know what people are buying. Yeah. And they were buying it, just not for me. <laughs> oh, wow. And I realized, it took me a long time to realize that, you know, they don't want to come in and just buy a basic, whatever item unless it's the best basic item yeah. there is they want they're shopping for something really cool and different when they're coming to a small boutique and a small oh. place and going out of their way i was getting so mad i was like you i know what you're buying i know what you want why <laughs> won't you buy it for me and I, for a while i was like you're not people don't want to support so they say they want to support small businesses and they won't and blah blah, right. blah and i got for a little while, I really did get really angry. Yeah. And I was just like, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> and then- I wish I could see you every yeah. time somebody walked in and yeah. walked out. Just, and, like, uh. and then I figured, you know, I'm like, okay, what's in my control? Right. What can I change in this? What yeah. are they buying? Yeah. Okay, go on to that and go. And it's like having things, the right thing at the right price points. Yeah. Because it's not like people wouldn't spend like our rain jacket is three hundred dollars, but yeah. it is. You'll have it for your whole life. Yeah. It's you wear it every day, yeah, but timeless. like uh, yeah. something you wear one time. Yeah, they'll probably go buy that from Zara or somewhere else where they, they wish they would time. buy it from me. Right. But like at the end of the day, 
yeah, they That's know all. like this is it. Yeah, especially in the day of social media, those loud things. I mean, you only want to be picked, photographed yeah. in it so many times. <laughs> What would you recommend uh, to other people that would be interested in starting a business or starting something? Yeah. Um, I mean, I definitely didn't do my research. <laughs> what is it? Um, do research? I think I kind of wanted, in a certain way, I liked the fact that I didn't know I some of the stuff so, so that I yeah. could do it my own way because I was like, most businesses fail. Yeah. And most think the way everyone's doing it is not working right and people are not surviving as small businesses so yeah. why don't I just do what I feel and mm -hmm. what makes sense to me and I think the biggest thing is figuring out what your what the gap in the marketplace is and yeah. for, and going with that and really focusing on that thing yeah so for me that was I was like why are all these boutiques carrying the same thing that Nordstrom has yeah so I think really just trusting your gut and yeah, you know, listening to your customer and what they want and figuring out who your customer is. That might take a while, but yeah. really figuring out what they want and mm -hmm. what they want from you. Yeah, thank you uh, for being on the show. Yes, thanks for having um, me. And I am impressed that you can drink and hold your liquor much better than me. Uh, I don't know why College I'm impressed. Did, did me justice. This is bad news, man. <laughs> like I, I, I had a drink and a half in. What's wrong? Shampoo effect. Shampoo effect. All right, let's do that. We'll do that as a, a, a cheers yes. on the way out, right? Shampoo yes. effect. Are Shampoo you ready? Effect. Shampoo effect. Shampoo effect. All right. Kayla, thank you for being on the show. And if you like what you saw and you want to see more people like Kayla, come on and, you know, teach you how to do things, then subscribe. I think there's a bell or something that you can ring and subscribe. And if you have your own that you want to talk about, go to fups.com. We'd love to have you on the show.